Good morning, thriving warriors and those who wish they were. Alexa, what is the date? It's Thursday, November 10th. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 6.14 a.m. Have a good morning, Edward. Alexa, what is the weather? In Amargosa Valley, it's 39 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies. Today, you can look for lots of sun with a high of 59 degrees and a low of 35 degrees. Okay, there we go. So the weather is creeping down. Yesterday it was 35 to 56. Oh, it's actually coming up, 35 to 59. Okay, so here we are. Department of Career Services. Good morning, Todd. Good to see you on this morning. I will be in at Rainman around 9.30-ish, be certainly before 10. It depends what time we're able to get out of here because we have a lot of chores to do. Okay, so here we are again, Department of Career Services. Good morning, Diana. Good morning. And my hunch is Charlene is there too. So what do we do here at Career Services? We help you move from point A up to point B, where B A, point A to B, where B is better than A. That's what we do. It's very simple. We just try to help you move yourself from point A to point B. We support your efforts and we provide little breadcrumbs, bleep, 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 things that you can follow to get from point A to point B. Point A to point B. That's what we do, to help you get from point A to point B. Why am I repeating it so much? Because we want it to become second nature to you, that I'm, I'm trying to get to point B. Good morning, Charlene. She's busy in the Rain Man kitchen making breakfast for the veterans. Great, good system. I'm sure Todd will be in there in a second to make coffee or something. We've got to figure that solution out. We had a few coffee makers, if those people like coffee. So I'm having eggs this morning from the Venetian. But back to our purpose here. What are we doing? How do we do it? Well, this video is supposed to motivate you to do the important stuff. This is just the stem winding, watch, stem winding, uh, start of the day. Part of our daily routine, good habits, uh, because birds of a feather flock together. That's kind of our theme, birds of a feather Birds of a feather flock together. Or as Seth Godin says, people like us do things like this. So uh, this video is just the first step in the daily routine. Other steps, we have our four week basic training course, which everybody should be doing. We have a link to the actual video motivational video, the one I use starting at uh, before 5 a.m. I start listening to it over and over and over again with my pen and my paper taking notes so that I can write stuff down. Well, that's what taking notes is so that I can not only remember, but I can kind of condense it, hopefully motivate you to click on the link below in the description, please subscribe. I know you guys are all subscribed, but for those people who are not yet watching, people in the future who are gonna watch this video, people later today, maybe people you shared the link with, et cetera, so that they know down in the description, there are links to the four week basic training course. There's links to the video that was this, that I used to create the notes for today. There's a link to the TED Talk that goes with today's basic training day. So this is week one, day four of basic training. Yuval Harari, why humans control the planet. Really, really good. Really, really good one. Important for your personal career and also the first law of power. Who remembers what the first law of power is? 
the actual law of power. Okay, so also we have a whole bunch of other services that we provide links to services, phone numbers, housing, clothing, food, hygiene, transportation, skills training, and like in our workshop, our daily, our four week basic training course, skills training, foundational employment, got a call from two employers yesterday, two of our key employers, Mailer and 7-Eleven, looking for qualified, rock and roll quotes, qualified people, not people, qualified people, people that are part of our program. So we have no problem getting jobs for qualified people as part of the path to get from point A to point B. And there is last, but certainly not least, is the transcript. Actually, it's Seth Godin's daily blog post. So that's what we have crammed in here. This is now six minutes in. We haven't even gotten started yet, but I'm conscious of our need to keep it brief and short. Um, so some of the memes, oh, so how do we do this? What is our theme? Our theme is it's simple, dot, dot, dot. Getting from point A to point B is simple. And then we have a theme, it's simple. Today's little breadcrumb, bleep, bleep, bleep. First breadcrumb is character first. Birds of a feather flock together. If you cannot be trusted, your opportunities in the future will be greatly, greatly limited. <clears throat> the people you want to help you won't help you. Why not? Because they can't trust you. Why can't you be trusted? Oh, think about that. Why can't you be trusted? Because you don't trust other people. Why don't you trust other people? Well, you can probably go back through your life, the history of your life, as a series of events where you were disappointed, you were let down by the people you thought you could trust. So it's simpler in our young brain, it's simpler to not trust than to say, hmm, perhaps I put my trust in the wrong people. Yes, I should be able to trust my friends and family. Let's just focus on family. Yes, I should be able to trust my family. However, if they're operating under the um, mechanism of you can't trust people, then their default setting is they're not trustworthy either. You can't trust them. Birds of a feather flock together. If you're not trustworthy, it's probably because you grew up around people where trust was not the most important thing. Okay, well, now we're here. This is our tribe. Trust is essential. Okay, so our main breadcrumb theme for today, character first. If people can't trust you, you're going to be um, condemned to be in the shallows of life. The current, you're not going to go with the current. The, the, the wave is not going to carry you to great distances loosely paraphrasing Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Okay. <clears throat> Be trustworthy. Okay. Also write it down. So I included a new link in today's video to a Headway. Headway is an app that has simple summaries of books that you can read within 15, 20 minutes a day. Get in the habit of reading. It helps your brain. It helps you remember things. It helps you synthesize new thoughts. It helps you get other ideas. Other memes from today's video, um, lose your fear of losing. Don't be afraid to lose. I grew up playing baseball. Well, I played a lot of sports, basically every sport there was, but my more of my passion <clears throat> was baseball. In baseball, if you get a hit one third of the time, you're an all-star. You don't fear getting, striking out, uh, you don't fear not getting a hit. It's just part of the game. You keep going. You learn from your mistakes. The guy strikes you out and you say, okay, next time I'm going to be ready for that. I'm going to anticipate that. So when he does to me next time what he did to me last time, I will be ready and I will prevail. Do more, have more, become more. Another meme. Do more, have more, become more. Um, success is 
the result of hard work and hustle, okay? Hard work and hustle. You have to work hard and you have to hustle. You got to uh, be ready to pick up the ball when you see it on the ground, work hard and hustle. What do you, what do you want more, <clears throat> immediate gain or long-term success? Most of the people who are not watching this video, who chose to not watch this video, were interested in immediate gain. Oh, I'd rather spend my time right now jerking off than watching a video. Oh, I'd rather spend my time listening to a stupid YouTube song because it makes me feel better than actually putting my brain to work. Oh, I'd rather watch a, a TikTok video because it makes me chuckle rather than put in the time to make myself a better person. As we heard the other day, regret, you can either invest time now or um, let's see what was, something weighs ounces, regret weighs tons, okay? Birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. All right, today's TED Talk, Yuval Harari, why humans control the planet. This can apply to you but it's important to understand it for the world. So basically on an individual level, humans are not really superior to many other creatures. We're not stronger, we're not faster, um, we're not harder working. There's a lot of things we're not better, but collectively we control the planet. Why? Well, because we are the only animals who can work flexibly and in very large numbers. So there's some things like ants and insects that can work in large numbers. They can cooperate, work in large numbers, but they can't work flexibly. They only have one way of doing things. And if that way is disrupted, they're, they're wiped out. Other social mammals can work flexibly, but they don't do it in large numbers. Good morning, Richard. They do not do it in large numbers. Chimpanzees will trade with one another, but they have to know each other in order to do it. Only humans can work flexibly in large numbers. Aha, uh -huh. why is it we're able to do that? Taking it down a level, why can we do it? Why can we work flexibly in large numbers? Because we can uh, invent stories that we all agree to. And if we agree to the story, hey, it's worth building a bridge across this chasm because it's gonna save us a lot of time. If we can work, uh, if we can agree on the story, we'll work flexibly together and we'll do it and we'll accomplish great things. <clears throat> okay, take it down another level. Well, why are we able to do that? Why can we invent stories? We have imagination. No other animal has imagination like humans. You'll never see chimpanzees say, hey, let's go look at the beautiful sunset. Or here's a better way to do things. As Yuval Harari says, you'll never see a chimpanzee go off to another chimpanzee group to talk about a better way of doing things. Okay, why do we have imagination? Aha, now we're getting into it. Well, we're able to see the world in two levels, objective reality and fictional reality. Why are we able to do that? Saving time because time is racing here. Why are we able to do that? because we have more neurons, and that now leads us to Xana Herculana, which will probably be this weekend, because we cook our food. Anyway, so Yuval Harari, great TED Talk. That's today, day one point, week one, day four. Next, Seth Godin's blog. This is a long one. Did the ad work? Digital advertising has turned millions of people and organizations into not just the target of ads, but the advertisers as well. It doesn't easily answer the obvious question. Did that ad work? Right, that's the obvious question. Did the ad work? Long before digital ads were invented, my late friend Lester Wonderman, probably Wunderman, coined the term direct marketing. This is measured active advertising. Spend $10 on an ad and you'll know by tomorrow if you made $20 or lost five. Lester helped invent the American Express card and grew the Columbia Record Club, among other direct marketing heroics. The secret is simple. 
Are you ready for the secret of direct marketing or of advertising? Are you ready for the secret? Measure an ad, and if it works, do it more. That's it. That's the secret. Measure an ad, and if it works, do it more. And so Google. Google makes billions of dollars selling direct marketing to organizations that aren't being particularly brave, insightful, or clever. They're simply testing, measuring, and repeating. On the other hand, ads on podcasts or Twitter almost never measure well. They rarely seem to work in the PL sense because they're brand ads, not direct ads. The purpose of a brand ad is to deliver a hard to measure but important feeling to the potential consumer. Okay, it doesn't measure. Uh, results, it measures feelings. The brand ad tells a story, builds trust, and most of all, helps the customer decide that this brand makes them feel good enough, hard to define, that they'll pay extra for it. If you try to measure brand ads like quarks and other quantum phenomena, the benefits disappear. The very things you do to make them measure better cause them to pretty to be pretty lousy brand ads. Running brand ads in a medium that is counter to what the brand is trying to accomplish makes very little sense, regardless of how much it costs. On the other hand, sponsoring interactions that build trust and connections is hard to overpay for. All along a, all along, all a long way of saying that advertisers in the digital space are finally spending more time and energy thinking about the places they're advertising and wondering about whether they're simply making more noise or actually making a difference. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the key thing, but I wanna go back to if you, the purpose of a brand ad is to deliver hard to measure but important feeling to the potential consumer. Okay, so from Simon Sinek, we know that feelings, all decisions are based upon feelings. So if somebody feels good, then under the right circumstances, they will become a customer. The brand ad tells a story, builds trust, and most of all, helps the customer decide that this brand makes them feel good enough that they'll pay extra for it. Uh, running brand ads in a medium that is counter to what the brand is trying to accomplish makes very little sense. So that would be like putting ads for <clears throat> um, some kind of greasy food in a health magazine makes very little sense, regardless of how much it costs. Or uh, health food, you're promoting health food at a Dick's Last Resort type of thing. On the other hand, sponsoring interactions that build trust and connections, it's hard to overpay for. So you want to kind of do that at uh, like, uh, you know, places that people go to do good things. Like if you're at a yoga convention or you're at a yoga tournament or something, um, that's where you want to promote the brand, not direct advertising. But you can do that too. So let's see, that is Seth Godin. What else do we have here on the hit parade? All right, anybody have anything else to say? Henry, Diana, okay. Charlene is doing breakfast, that's great. And now let us quickly go to our Navy SEAL Maxim. Very quickly, what is it? Yes, Diana, perfect. Yesterday was the only easy day. So what does that mean? Push yourself a little bit harder each day. So we're trying to get from point A to point B, where point B is better. It's an uphill climb. Embrace the suck. Do just a little bit more today than yesterday. Uh, what else? Embrace the suck. Choose the hard path. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Have a goal. Now, so in today's video, they talk about write it down. Once again, write down your goal for today. Write something down. If you read the headway, the book summary, uh, there are new feature that's in there. 
20 minute book summary, how to make your life better. Uh, it's about planning and stop doing things that waste time. And let us see, what else do we have going? So Navy SEAL Maxim, we're at the end. Today is Thursday. One more day to make something happen. And Todd, are you still there? Diana, and out. And cut. Good. Okay, Diana, thank you. And let's see, Charlene, are you there? Are you able to say and cut Charlene? Or Todd? Or Richard in the background? And cut. There we go. Cut and cut. Boom. 